Universalist Christians in the Church Tradition Understandably, many Christians are oblivious how robust and rich the Universalist tradition throughout Christian history is. In this video we will look at a few of these Universalists going back as far as the first century. Biblical Roots of Universal Salvation As a disclaimer this will be a brief overview of scriptural passages that early church Universalists took to be evidence of Universalism. This is only to provide evidence for the assumption that first and foremost Universalism was based in the Christian scriptures. Biblical Roots Isaiah 66 23 From new moon to new moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares the Lord. Isaiah 9 and 23 to 25 That day there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria, and Assyria will come into Egypt, and Egypt into Assyria, and the Egyptians will worship with the Assyrians. In that day Israel will be the third with Egypt and Assyria, ha blessing in the midst of the earth, twenty-five whom the Lord of hosts has blessed, saying, Blessed be Egypt to me people, and Assyria the work of my hands, and Kisrael my inheritance. Lamentations 3 22 23 22 The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lamentations 3 31 to 33. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but, though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not afflict from his heart or grieve the children of men. 1 John Twitwell. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. John 12 at 31 to 32. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. 1 Timothy 2-6 Who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the monochrist Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. Romans 3.23-24 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by His grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 5.18-19 uh, Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Romans 11:11 11, 11 to 32. So I ask, did they stumble in order that they might fall? By no means. Rather, through their trespass salvation has come to the Gentiles, so as to make Israel jealous. Now if their trespass means riches for the world, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? Now I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous, and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole lump, and if the root is holy, so are the branches. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant toward the branches. If you are, remember it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note then the kindness and the severity of God severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God has the power to graft them in again. For if you were cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree, and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree? Lest you be wise in your own sight, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery. Brothers, a partial hardening has come upon Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way all Israel will be saved, as it is written. 
The Deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish from God Linus from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As regards the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For just as you were at one time disobedient to God but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. Romans 14 11, For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. 1 Corinthians 15 22 23, For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 24 to 28. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For Goda has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. 1 Timothy 4.10 For to this end we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Hebrews 9.19 For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people. Hebrews Twanin, But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. Universalist Christians in the Early Church, Bardason of Edesson. Bardason was a Syriac Christian philosopher and theologian who lived from 154 to 222 AD. For, just as human free will is not governed by the necessity of the seven i.e., the planets, and, if it were governed, it would be able to stand against its governors, so this visible human being, in turn, is unable to easily get rid of its principality's government, since he is a slave and a subject. For, if we could do all, we would be all. If we couldn't decide anything, we would be the instruments of others. But whenever God likes, everything can be, with no obstacle at all. Indeed, there is nothing that can impede that great and holy will. For, even those who are convinced to resist God, do not resist by their force, but they are in evil and error, and this can be only for a short time, because God is kind and gentle, and allows all natures to remain in the state in which they are, and to govern themselves by their own will. But at the same time they are conditioned by the things that are done and the plans that have been conceived, by God to help them, for this order and this government that have been given, by God, and the association of one with another, damps the nature's force, so that they cannot be either completely harmful or completely harmed, as they were harmful and harmed before the creation of the world. And there will come a time when even this capacity for harm that remains in them will be brought to an end by the instruction that will obtain in a different arrangement of things. And, once that new world will be constituted, all evil movements will cease, all rebellions will come to an end, and the fools will be persuaded, and the lacks will be filled, and there will be safety and peace, as a gift of the Lord of all natures. Clement of Alexandria was a famous Christian convert from the Catechetical School in Alexandria, North Africa. He lived from 150 to 215 AD in Strom. 7. 2.12 Clement is clear that God's project, aim, and activity is universal salvation. The God of the universe has disposed of everything for universal salvation, in general and singularly. Thus, God did whatever did not prevent the voluntary nature of human choice, and showed this as a help to attain virtue, that in some way even those who are endowed only of weak vision the soul true omnipotent could be revealed a good God who from eternity and forever saves through the Son and is absolutely not responsible for evil. Thus, 
it is a work of God's salvific justice to lead every being to the best in so far as possible. Origen of Alexandria Origen lived from 185 to 253 AD in Alexandria, Egypt where he attended the Catechetical School. He states, Every being will be restored to be one, and God will be all in all. However, this will not happen in a moment, but slowly and gradually, through innumerable ends of indefinite duration, because correction and purification will take place gradually, according to the needs of each individual. Thus, whereas some with a faster rhythm will be the first to hasten to the goal, and others will follow them closely, yet others on the contrary will fall a long distance behind. And in this way, through innumerable orders constituted by those who make progress and, after being enemies, are reconciled with God, there will come the last enemy, death, that this may be destroyed and there may be no enemy left. Prink 366 The first Alexandrian Origenians, St. Anthony Thuthnistus and Pyrrhus. After Origen's death the catechetical school in Alexandria was directed by Thugnistus in 265 and then Pyrrhus. The former wrote outlines now lost, but summarized by Photius in which he adhered to Origen's doctrine, including his doctrine of universal salvation, and defended Origen. Saint Athanasius, who held Origen and Didymus in high esteem, also praised Thugnistus together with Origen. Pyrrhus followed Dorigen's thought so faithfully as to be called Dorigen the Younger 151 according to Philip of Side. He composed a panegyric 152 on St. Pamphilus. He was a disciple of his and wrote an apology for Origen. Still in the second half of the 4th century, Pyrrhus was admired by the Egyptian Origenian monks dubbed the Tall Brothers, and in particular Ammonius, who read Dorigen together with Pyrrhus and Didymus, and St. Melania, who read Origen along with Pyrrhus, Basil, and Gregory.153 all of which is to say that Origen's person and work continued to be esteemed in his native Egypt and wider afield. Dugnistus and Pyrrhus After Origen's death, the catechetical school in Alexandria was directed by Thugnistus in 26,580 and then Pyrrhus. Both adhered to Origen's doctrine of universal salvation. Pyrrhus followed Dorigen's thought so faithfully that he came to be known as Origen the Younger according to Philip of Side. Hierakas, a learned monk, also espoused Dorigen's doctrine. Saint Anthony Saint Anthony was a desert father known for his practice of desert monasticism. He postulated the original unity of all rational beings who have the same intellectual essence. Rational beings fell from that essence and now the Logos will bring them back to the original state in restoration in his letters 2 and 4 to 6. Dionysius of Alexandria Dionysus was Bishop of Alexandria and a pupil of Origen. His universalism is evident in his Apologies of Origen preserved by Photius. The Apology was four books long. St. Gregory the Wanderwoker Gregory was a disciple of Origen. Rufinus in his Apology against Jerome attests that the Wander Worker was a preacher of universal salvation. Macarena the Elder, the grandmother of Basil and Gregory of Nyssa was a disciple of the Wander Worker who brought Christianity to the neo -Kissari. With it he brought the teachings of Origen. He transmitted the doctrine of universal salvation to Gregory of Nyssa, Macarena the Elder and the Younger. Pamphilus, Pamphilus was a disciple of Pyrrhus. He wrote an apology of Origen in five books where he defends an accusation explicitly talking about universal salvation. Methodius, Methodius, Bishop of Olympus, in Lycia was a critic of Origen but also espoused universal salvation. Much of his criticisms of Origen ever surrounded his doctrine of universal salvation. On the contrary, his beliefs seem consistent with apocatastases. In many places he denotes that evil and sin are providential realities, but eventually God will conquer them save all. Eusebius was the bishop of Caesarea in Palestine and a court historian of the Emperor Constantine. Then God will be in all who will have been made perfect meanwhile by the Son. And the Son will hand the kingdom to God, presenting him all those with whom he had been entrusted safe and ready for the adoration and the sanctity of the Father. So God will be all in all representing all the goods for them. Didymus the Blind Didymus was another celebrated leader of the catechetical school in Alexandria. He was an avid defender of Origen. Gregory of Nyssa and Macarena the Younger Gregory of Nyssa was also an avid adherent to Origen's teaching. In his Dialogue on the Soul and Resurrection, 
Macron is presented as arguing for universal salvation. Universal salvation is treated most extensively in a short commentary on 1 Corinthians 15 minutes 28217 where Gregory overtly states even the salvation of the devil. Gregory here describes universal salvation as the highest fulfillment of hope. In this work, as in many others, he was closely inspired by Origen. Macron and like Origen believed that otherworldly sufferings are healing and not retributive. Gregory Nazianzen, Gregory was educated along with Basil and was good friends with him and his brother Gregory of Nyssa. From his fourth theological ration on the sun, he says, God will be all in all 1 Cor 1528 in the time of the restoration of pocket astases, when we will be no longer many, like now, with various movements of the will and passions, and it will not be the case that we carry in ourselves only little or nothing of God, but we shall be all entirely conformed to God, able to receive God wholly, and God alone. This is the perfection we aspire to, and it is especially Paul himself who guarantees this. Evagrius Ponticus Evagrius was a pupil of Gregory Nazianzen and served as lector under Basil and then as deacon under Gregory Nazianzus in Constantinople. He was influenced by Origen and Neoplatonism. In his letter to Melania, Evagrius states, And there will be a time when the body, the soul, and the intellect will cease to be separate, with their names and plurality, because the body and the soul will be elevated to the rank of intellect. This conclusion can be drawn from the words, that they may be one in us, as you and I are owned 192, and thus there will come a time when the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and their rational creation, which makes up their body, will cease to be separate, with their names and plurality. This conclusion can be drawn from the words, God will be all in all 1 Cor 1528. E.P. Ad Mel. Wife. Other universalists include Diodor of Tarsus, Theodore of Mopsustia and Antioch. Ambrose was a Roman senator and also became the most famous bishop of Milan. Augustine initially supported universal salvation also before becoming an opponent. John Cassian, Pseudo-Dionysius, 7th-8th-century Syriac ascetics John and Isaac Nineveh, 